Welcome everyone to this short conversation mini class on tips for tapping with kids. This is a conversation I've been so excited about waiting to share for many years. And I thought what better way to share it than bring on some of my certified practitioners who are using this technique with either their children personally, or they're using it in their tapping practice. They're working with kids um, and teaching them how to tap. Our mission here with this movement is to get tapping into the hands, hearts, and homes of people all over the world, and especially the little ones, because tapping helps us feel better faster. And in a big world and being a little person, sometimes life is a lot. And if we can have a tool like tapping, that's literally at your fingertips to help kids feel better, and especially getting it into the parents, into the teachers, into the hands of the right adults, um, this can significantly change the world. So Welcome. I'm going to start off how this is going to go. I'm going to, we're each going to share either a tip or a story around uh, how to start tapping with your kids. So I'll go ahead and start and then I'm going to pass it off uh, throughout the room. So my first tip for learning to tap with kids is to learn the basic formula. There's actually a very a simple formula that we use with tapping in tapping school. I teach you how to do this. And we always start with three questions. Number one, how are you feeling? So asking your little one, how are you feeling? What's going on? Question number two, where do you feel it in your body? And then question number three, and this one you can change if you want, but on a scale of zero to 10, how intense is that feeling? Zero meaning it's not intense at all. 10 meaning it's really high. And obviously this is if you're working with a child that is, you know, growing up enough to communicate with you. Um, the other way of doing this with the little one is just saying like low, medium, high, because sometimes kids are like, I don't know a number. So low, medium, high, is it really high? Is it kind of strong or is it not strong at all? And that's the basic um, setup that we use even as adults, you know, even if you're to tap with yourself, how am I feeling? Where do I feel it in my body? How high is it on a scale of zero to 10? So that's my tip to start to, and then you want to apply the tapping to it. And if you don't know how to do that yet, don't worry, I'm going to share with you how to do that at the end. So that's my tip to start. I have tapped with my own daughter, um, whether it's been around leaving me when she was really little and she would share homes and the anxiety she had going from one home to the other. Um, I've also tapped with her around test anxiety, um, math tests in particular, right? Just like being really stressed out and, and afraid that she's going to forget or she's going to, all the stuff she learned, she's going to lose it. And so those are the two ways that I've used tapping. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to you, Stephanie. I would love for you to just introduce yourself, a little bit about who you are, and your tip for everyone tapping with kids. Yeah, I'm Stephanie. I'm a single mom of five kids, and I took Jackie's certification program um, because one of the biggest reasons is because I was tapping with my son. Um, when I got divorced three years ago, we went through a really, really traumatic event during the split. And my son developed a real anxiety that somebody was going to take him away from me. And that would translate into not sleeping and not being able to fall asleep at night. And so I started tapping with him. I've been tapping a little bit on my own, you know, but I started tapping with him and it was like a miracle. He could go to sleep and he rested and, um, and he would even tell his siblings, his siblings are all older and they, they were too cool to tap with me. So he would be like, you should let mom tap with you. It really works. <laughs> and um, now he's 12 or almost 13. So now he's kind of too cool to tap with me, he thinks. But I, I know I've heard Jackie mention this before. And one thing that's worked really well is he will let me surrogate tap for him. Um, you know, tap on myself and say it for him. And the other night he was kind of back to a little bit of the anxiety around sleep. And before I even finished, he was out. So yeah, it's been, it's been a great tool. And that's why, that was why I was so motivated to, um, to get certified because, you know, I, I seeing how well it has helped our family in a big change and a big transition. And I wanted to be able to share that with other people. So Oh my gosh, hats off to you. A single mom of five kids, like that is, you're phenomenal. And you took the certification this year. You are just incredible. And I know you said people come to you all the time to tap with their kids now too. It's so cool to see this start to spread. And I think that is such a great tip. Surrogate tapping, as you mentioned, is 
is if your either child's too little or if your child's too old and they don't think it's cool, which is totally where Mira's at right now. Like she rolls her eyes at it, but I'll just tap on behalf of her if she gives me permission and say, you know, even though you feel really anxious right now. And one of the cool things I noticed happened with that is the, the child can interrupt you and say, I'm not anxious, I'm frustrated. And you're like, oh, okay. So then you, you can start to see them start to participate. So great tips. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And, um, We'll share uh, afterwards where everyone can find you as well. So for each of you, we'll share links to either your social media or your website or however people can connect. Thank you, Shannon Winchester. I'll go over to you. I would love for you to share a little bit about who you are, why you got into tapping and any tips you have. Hi, so yes, um, Shannon Winchester. And I went through Jackie's program, what, three years ago now? And I started with the four day tapping. So, um, and it has worked wonders in my life and continues to work wonders in my life. And I went on to um, train for tapping with kids. And one of my favorite stories is with my son and it has to do with the fire drill. So he had, he was petrified, terrified of the fire drill so bad that he was, mommy, I can't get dressed because his knees and his legs would shake. So they would just tremble so bad. And um, he didn't want to go to school every day. He would calculate when the fire drill was coming. He'd say, okay, well, you know, December's over. So I know what's going to be coming in January. He was terrified. And so this year, this went through kindergarten. And so in first grade last year, um, they, they let me, they told me when the fire drill was going to be. And so I would get him out of school and I'd put him in the car and we'd start tapping and then when the fire drill would go off, I would roll down the window, which I have to tell people, like, I'm not trying to traumatize him, but, you know, so that he can hear it and he can know he's safe. Yeah. And, um, and we would tap and it took two times of doing that. So, you know, two months. And then the next time there was a fire drill, we got home, there was a fire drill. Okay. How'd you do? It was a little scary, but, you know, I got through it. Okay. And um, the next month, the fire drill, he told me a week later. And we're talking a full year of, I mean, he didn't even want to go into first grade because he was so scared of the fire drill. So it worked incredibly well for him. And it's worked in a lot of different ways with him. And um, and tapping with other kids has been a real joy too. Wow. So, yeah. That is so cool that like he forgot to tell you. He just, he, he, he just forgot. Yeah. And I know and that's when I knew I was like, yes. <laughs> That's so cool. And I know you also used it because originally when um you we first found each other, your little one had a lot of food allergies. Is, is that correct? And did you use tapping on that? I did. And especially with his skin. So he had a lot of eczema. And then when I started tapping with you, um, his skin was clear, but he felt like he was a giant boo-boo because, you know, in the past he really had been to a degree. And so we actually tapped on, you know, his skin and the feelings that he had around his skin. And we are talking, I live in Florida. And so it was 101 degrees. We were at my parents' house and it was, you know, there's no trees, no shade. And he wanted to be fully covered head to toe and, you know, cotton pajamas, socks and everything. And within two nights, he wanted to run around naked, sleep naked. Um, so it really changed his world with his skin as well. And his allergies are much better. Thank you for remembering that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just, it's wild to see. And there's a, there's a, 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 it's called the apex effect. And I know you ladies here know it and tapping when someone will come in with a fear or an experience, like, you know, not wanting to show their skin, or sometimes it shows up in like back pain, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it'll be so intense. And um, that's why we rate the the feeling and the intensity because at the end of the tapping, it it's gone and people will be like, I forgot that I had that. I forgot that I, you know, had this pain or had this issue. And so I'm just celebrating you so big, Shannon. I know you've done a lot of work in this tapping world. Any tips for any fellow parents out there who are considering tapping with their kids? I jotted a bunch down. It's just like you want to just say everything, right? So one of the things that I feel like um, really helps me when I tap with kids that don't know me well is to tap all over the body. That just really gets the energy flowing and it kind of takes away the, um, it's just a good icebreaker. So tapping all over and we get really silly and tap our head and go down all the way to our top and our feet. And it really breaks the ice and it gets their energy going and it gets them, you know, it just gets them in the mood, I guess you could say. It just really breaks the ice well. So that's one of my, my favorite tips. And then, you know, just keeping it really simple and using the words that they use and just not 
with our adult brains overcomplicating it because it can be a really easy process. I love that tip. And tapping all over the body is kind of like, then that they don't have to get it perfectly or it doesn't have to, you know, it's not so rigid. It can kind of just get things flowing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Shannon. And I'll be sure to share afterwards where everyone can reach out to you because each and one of these ladies are phenomenal practitioners. And I would recommend working with them personally and my, like even my own child. I'm like, you can help with any one of these people and I would trust them. So <laughs> thank you so much, Shannon. And if you have more tips, feel free to share them. Um, in the chat even, and, and I can add them in after. Amazing. I'm going to go over to you, Katrin. I can see your little one with you as well. Um, I would love for you to share just a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and um, any tapping tips or stories. Oh, maybe it's not and wanting to unmute. That's okay. We can come back. I'm going to go over to you, Mireille. I would love for you to share, um, same question, a little bit about who you are, where you're from, why you got into tapping and any tips for tapping with kids. Sure. Hi, my name is Mirei Nashimoto and I work with kids. I'm a dance teacher, movement teacher, and I've been teaching littles from ages three to five elementary school and just recently started teaching a high school class. And I always use tapping at the beginning of class uh, because I find that it's a really great way to help ease, especially those students who are feeling nervous or self-conscious to bring them into a space where they feel safe. Um, and so with the little ones, um, I actually use a song because I find that really helps to catch their attention. Um, and so it's just a really simple song and I just start from the top of the head and I actually have just picked um, just really simple tapping points. I don't go through all of them because I find it can get complicated with the little ones. Um, so I just do head to just under the collarbone with them and we sing a song and it's really simple. We go through um, just kind of saying things like, you know, that help just ground them in their body and affirmations mostly like <clears throat> I'm strong, I'm wise, I'm kind, I'm love. And um, yeah, it's just a fun way. And it's a song. It helps them remember it. And of course, sometimes, you know, they just want to watch and others want to do it and that's fine, you know, and I, I can tell they all get something out of it, even if they're not actually physically tapping. Um, but with the high school students, you know, it's interesting because they are older and I can go into a little more detail with them about what we're doing. But the same thing, they're kind of self-conscious and they don't always want to share, especially in a group setting, right? It, uh, they don't want to share exactly what they're feeling. So I will usually kind of tune into the group and pick a topic that I'm just presenting for the day. Same thing, I do keep it simple. I mean, we do the side of the hand, but we do from head to under the collarbone as well. Um, and I have been able to kind of go a little bit deeper to explain, you know, to to tune into how they feel, to rate it, but I don't, you know, give them the pressure to have to say it out loud. I just ask them to reflect on it for themselves. Um, and again, for them too, sometimes it's, some students will say it out loud, others won't, but they just silently tap, others just observe, and that's fine. You know, I wanna create no pressure, um, but what I've observed from the beginning, so it's been, I guess six weeks now of teaching this particular class in the high school and it's a mix of kids who you know some are very comfortable being there dancing others are really uncomfortable you can tell they're really um, awkward or maybe don't even want to be there you know um and this one student in particular he's very um in the the instructors of the school told me ahead of time that he tends to be defiant and just not even want to participate. So um, I've noticed in the last few weeks, he's participating. He's not defiant at all. And I don't know if it's the tapping, maybe it is, but that's what I observe. And he's great. He's doing great. And I barely had to say a word, you know, about it. So, um, and I can tell they really, I think, you know, being able to say out loud some of the things that, you know, you know, they're thinking and feeling like, I'm really uncomfortable. I don't want to be have people watching me move, you know, just I can tell just by 
verbalizing it, it puts their minds at ease and I can tell them kind of, they can kind of settle into the space. Um, so anyway, so that that's my story and I really love it. And, you know, my kids are grown up, so they're kind of in that stage of, yeah, rolling eyes and being like, okay, I mean, they'll tap along with me silently sometimes, but it's good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it's been so great to work cool. in these group settings. Yeah. It's so cool to hear. Cause I, I actually tapped in a high school once as well. My, the high school that I grew up in, I went back and I tapped with a group and is, I mean, high school is awkward to begin with. So like making them do an awkward thing was, you know, the whole experience, but I did the same thing. I just picked a general topic. I think I, I picked a topic of like the pressure, like pressure and like pressure around tests and exams. And, um, I mean, you can tap with teenagers on anything from like body image to athletic performance. The, the cool thing about tapping is you can use it on anything. And I remember one of the kids saying, he's like, is this like voodoo or something? Cause I feel like you're reading my mind. <laughs> and that's often how I know we even feel when we're tapping with someone that, um, can, can put to words how we're feeling. And sometimes our kids don't have the words. Like sometimes the feelings are so big, they don't have the words. And so that's such a great point is just finding the words for them and doing that surrogate tapping, not putting pressure on them can silently make them feel like really seen, heard and understood like, whoa, and might even have them come back again, just to be in that space that they know is safe for, for them to be acknowledged. So these are great tips. And I know you, you sing with little kids or you tap. I love that as well, making it really fun and playful. Thank you so much, Mireille. These are beautiful, beautiful work you're doing and beautiful examples of how to use it. Um, okay, Katrin, I'll go back over to you. Hopefully the mute button will work. Go for it. It works now. Sorry. My internet is crappy on my computer, so I'm on my phone. No worries. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm Katrin and I have four kids. They are like very widespread out in their ages. Like my youngest is one year and my oldest son is going to turn 15 in a week. And um. My main work is that I'm a doula, so I work mainly with pregnant women and with um, mamas, with new mamas. But um, yeah, I love tapping also with my kids. And like, I have like had really great experiences with doing tapping with my kids together with some of their friends and sometimes with them and the friends and the moms. And like one thing what I found was really sweet was like just finding a topic that they commonly would be interested in. We one time picked like siblings. We one time picked teachers. We just found something that they were interested in that day. And we started like all of us, also the moms sharing like stories, what they feel about that. And that's just that in itself brought such a beautiful connection because suddenly the mamas got out of the mama role and the kids heard stuff from them that they normally don't. And I would tell them like, hey, that's like a game where you're allowed to say all the things that you come to your mind. Like even the things that you normally think you maybe shouldn't even think. Right now you're allowed to just say it. And um, yeah, it was super cool and it was super fun. And like one thing that happened that I thought was interesting in regards to one of the ladies what one of the other ladies shared one of the days when we did it when we were done all the kids jumped up and they started to move like crazy like shaking it and they wanted all us mamas to do the same and it felt to me like as if they're having like a somatic release they just had to shake it all out and get it in the body and it was actually so cool doing that all of us and it brought so much joy there. So that was very really sweet. Wow. Yeah. Catherine, this is like, this is so cool because I've never experienced that tapping with my daughter and having someone hold that space. It's, it is almost like a form of therapy where you're like, you can say whatever <laughs> you want. And like, you can see that your parents are human too. They have emotions too. Like <laughs> what are bring them together. Yeah. Super cool. And the other thing I find really cool or interesting for people to know is like when you do it with your baby. Like whether when they are at a stage where they can't even talk yet, um, they can't really express what's going on, but by their sounds or behaviors or cries and just like really 
gently, you obviously talk way gentler, or just with one finger. And like seeing how that suits them when they're like in discomfort or pain. Um, that's really beautiful also as a tool and to explore it. Oh, my baby, she's now nearly a year and a half. So we do it as a game. I love that idea with this song. That's so smart. I'm going to yeah. start implementing that. But like even just like making it a game with her and like having her copy me and then watching her use it at specific times when I know she needs it. She's out of the blue when suddenly she goes like this or she will go like this. And I can see right now it's helping her regulate. And That's it's so, so cool, cool to see that, how they grow up with that and become such an innate thing that's just there and that's just built in. Wow. So. I th it, you know what? It reminds me that even for adults, you don't have to believe in it or understand it in order for it to work. And mm -hmm. once you know these points and like, I'll even notice like if I'm feeling anxious in traffic or something, like I'll just naturally start tapping on my collarbone or tapping and it just mm -hmm. automatically soothes the nervous system so it's such a great point like your kids don't even have to know what the points do or what's going on just tapping for them or even I used to do this with Mira to get her to go to sleep I just like I want to do a couple of rounds of tapping and tap on her and you'll notice them take a deep breath you'll notice them just start to unwind I love that Katrin these are great yeah. tips thank you so much yeah completely and like I'm just allowing them also to come and use it whenever they want to like my teenagers they normally don't want to but then there have been yeah. those specific moments when they I don't know they got really a big scare and then they suddenly were open for it so yeah. just like allowing it to be that resource that's available and that they see you use but that doesn't yeah. get pressured on them like you That's said, so she, time, I think like to get on that team that it is a weird thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that is also team. a cool thing and that it's fun and that it's available for them. <laughs> like, yeah. And I often say tapping found me at my worst and brought me to my best. And and that's, you know, if kids know that there's a tool available and they don't ha are not forced to do it, but they're, they're humans. They're going to have moments in life that are bumpy and that they might feel a bit of anxiety and to know, well, mom's got a tool that can help me through it. At least they know it's there. So thank you so yeah, much. Completely. These are great tips. I'm going to go on over to you, Kathy, and welcome, Allison. Thanks for jumping on. Kathy, I'd love to hear a little bit about who you are, how you use tapping with kids and any fun tips or stories you have. Yes. Love it. Hello. I love this. I love anytime we get to share. So I'm Kathy Baker. I'm a single mom of three and my oldest has um, some special needs that we deal with. I, I found tapping probably a little over two years ago. I had just moved with my kids back to Idaho um, in the middle of COVID. I decided homeschooling would be a good idea. And let's just say like I lost my living crap. Everything, everything was gone right? I could not like control myself. I could not maintain my anxiety. I found myself curled up on like my closet floor, just crying like uncontrollably way too many nights. And a friend told me about the four day tapping. And on day one, I was like, what the heck is this? What is she doing? This doesn't make sense. And day two, I was snatching my kids in the middle of a fight and being like, even though I'm mad, I can do this. And seeing them like calm down, right. And be like, so mad at each other but I'm just holding them, just tapping through all the points on them because I don't really know how to teach it at that point. And so I knew it really had to be something a part of my life. And I knew that I needed to share it with people because if I was a mess on the floor, guaranteed there was a mom somewhere else a mess on the floor. And to know that this got me off in the matter of minutes, they will probably fight. So I just use that. Um, so I love it. I went through your certification course and it has improved so much since then. So I'm so excited for those that come in now, but it taught me, taught me so much. And so the first, I will give two tips. Um, the first tip for my own kids. The one thing that I make sure that I do is I make sure that they see me tapping for myself all the time. So they know what that looks like. I can tell them something. We tell them all the time, right? But it's so much better when they see us. So there was times after my divorce that we would be driving from Idaho to Utah and kids are fighting. And I would be so overwhelmed that I would drive off, feel a panic attack coming on and just start tapping on the side of the road. And they would pause 
and they would watch and they were like, okay. Right. And so when they see mom doing this and it helping mom, it plants that seed of like, okay, this can help me. And so then when you go to help them, they already trust it because mom's already doing it. And so I think it's really important to model a tool for yourself and then engage with them and bring them into it. So my babies love that. And so I model it for them. We use it a lot. And then I've worked with teens. Um, and it's really interesting, like many of you shared, teens don't necessarily want to open up and be like, this is the coolest thing ever. Oh, I'm so excited. Right. So I always use some very just blunt and open comment that I know that they're saying. So I'm like, even though my mom says this is a good idea, I think this lady's crazy. Right. And I'll see him like kind of like laugh a little bit. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. This seems really weird. I don't understand this. Why am I tapping on my face? And they'll giggle and it brings down their guard a little bit. And then they're like, okay, this lady's not so serious. And so it just allows you to call yourself out for looking weird because you look weird to teenagers. And then you allow them to kind of bring down their defenses, which then allows them to feel a little more comfortable and a little more safe with you. And so I love, I love those. Model it with your kids, use it with your kids, and then break the ice by calling yourself out because it, it can be weird. Oh, right? my. So, yes, I love those two, those two tips the most. But thank yeah. you so much. These are so helpful. And I will say we had this conversation in tapping school the other day, the cohort that's running right now, around parents like, well, just go see this person and like go tap with them. And sometimes kids, first of all, like if you don't have the consent of the child, like that's not going to work. They don't want to do it. And sometimes the person that really needs to tap is actually the parents. Like you said, the parents start tapping and the parents can start working through some of their triggers or their things and model that. And, and the child's like, okay, well, it's working for them. Whether they do it as children or later, it's never, it's not going to do you any harm to learn as the parent and empower yourself with that tool. Yes. I love that. And so I want to share two quick little stories. One involves my son. He's nine. He has been the new kid in school for the last four years. We've moved and he's just been the new kid. And um, he, two years, three years ago, we had moved to that town and it was his first day of school and his anxiety was through the roof. And so when I picked him up from school, I said, Hey baby, how was it? And he said, mom, I started to cry at school. And I was like, baby, why? And he goes, well, I went to the bathroom. And when I came out of the bathroom, I didn't know where to go. I was so lost. And he's like, and then I got really scared because I didn't know who to ask. And there was nobody in the hall. So I just went back into the bathroom and cried. And I was like, <gasps> okay. And, and he's like, but mom, cause I got all teary eyed. I was like, baby. And he's like, don't worry though, mom. Cause then I started tapping because I know that it helps. And so I just tapped in the bathroom for a minute and then I realized I was okay. And when I walked out, there was somebody there to help. And I was like, <laughs> yes, right? That is what you want. Yes, tap in your home, but you want to know that your child feels empowered when you are not there. And so that was the biggest thing to me is knowing that my child was like, oh, I'm falling apart here. Oh, but I was taught something that lets me come back to myself. And so I loved that for him. And we just did it at the beginning of school. This one, he was vomiting, dry heaving, like in the car. I can't do this. I can't do this, mom. I can't do this. And I said, baby, let's tap. And he yelled at me and he goes, eh, what, what? and I was like, even though I'm mad at my mom and I don't want to go. And he was like, even though I'm mad at my mom, you know, and in two minutes, a little over two minutes. And he was like, are we done? I was like, baby, are we done? And he goes, I just need some chapstick cool. I got you. Let's go. And so it, it helps so much with that. But then my daughter, I think the most, the greatest thing about this is they go with their dad and they don't always love that. And then they go and visit his side of the family. And she will call me and be like, mom, I just want to come home. I just want you. I just want this, which then just crushes you. And so we FaceTime. And I love this because you don't have to be there to help somebody. So she props it up, locked in the little room, crying her eyes out, and we just tap. And within a matter of minutes, she's like, mommy, I'm okay now. I'm going to go watch TV with brother. And I can rest and I can have peace. And I can know that even though I can't be there, I can reach her through this and she can calm down and she can be okay and know that she's going to come back to me soon. And so it's just so universal. And it's just 
such a, an incredible thing. Wow. I have just full body goosebumps because that's it. Like if our kids can be empowered when we're not there, you know, God forbid anything ever happened, like, but they have this tool that they know, Hey, I have, I have, I can tap on my fingers and tap on my body and build a relationship with themselves that they've got themselves. So Kathy, thank you. Wow. What a beautiful story. And thank you for using it with your kids. Like these, this is what changes the world. Truly. Thank you. Um, I'll go over to Allison. Allison, I'd love for you to share just a little bit about who you are, uh, what brought you to tapping and any tips or stories you have for people tapping with kids. Oh, you're muted. It might have to, you just have to click unmute on your screen. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi. So um, I was part of Jackie's um, tapping cohort and uh, back probably two years, two, three years ago with um, Kathy there. And I, uh, I have a couple hats. So I'm a very, very active volunteer in my tiny little community, very remote community of 300 people. And I live three hours away from all other amenities. And I'm a paramedic and school board trustee. And so I'm very engaged with the youth and I'm kind of a mother hen to the community. And uh, I've got, um, so tapping absolutely changed my life. And I, I thought I was doing all the modalities and I thought I was doing everything wonderfully. And I was, I was doing it good. And then Jackie kind of wrecked me a little bit <laughs> before she fixed me. <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm realizing, oh, wow, look at all these blockages that I had no idea that they existed. and in order to move past them, you work through them, right? So there was a lot of limitations I'd put on myself and I didn't know they were there to, to deal with. Um, as a school board trustee, my uh, intentions for the kids are always very, very high and I wanna do anything I can to make life better for them. So I created a couple yoga classes, after school yoga classes for the kids and like to finish off tapping. And I tried to have a couple weekly sessions. We were going to make it kind of a full year thing of weekly sessions, but with the transition of a teacher and stuff, it only lasted about six weeks. And it was so awkward to start off with. And actually, Kathy saved me at one point in time. We were talking and she told me what, what she just told you guys about kind of laughing at ourselves and why am I tapping on myself? This is really weird and so on and so forth. But all these kids are kind of like my babies. I've known them for five years, six years, whatever the case is. And I'm already a friend or a community member and somebody that's close to them. So it's really easy for them to laugh at me while I'm going through this process. And I personally am far more comfortable on one-on-one -on -one situations. So um, in the group setting, I have a hard time, but we had some good breakthroughs. And I, one day after um, yoga class, and yoga took a little while because for the first two, three sessions, you know, the kids are running or muck for quite a while before I can even get them calmed down to try and do this tree pose or anything else. And we were making it there and we uh, had a good session, a really good yoga session. And then we all sat down and did a tapping session to finish it off with. And um, it was a thing of beauty. It was so sweet because the kids were ready to go do their thing and we said okay you guys can go do but moms were gonna sit and do a tapping session because they were all really really excited and they were asking me for it right so I had no intentions of the kids sitting through it with us and um, we did it and all the kids joined us they loved it every one of them so I kept it neutral for all of us and there was a little bit of back and forth about how much we love ourselves and how proud we should be of everything we're getting done. And um, by the end of it, the mums just acknowledging all the work they do and not needing to hear it from somebody else. 
there wasn't one dry eye around our tapping session. Every mum was crying and there was sobbing. Like they were absolutely, and the kids were so moved by this that the next time I went into the classroom to do a tapping session, every one of them came to me and they were like, you made my mom so happy and they wanted to do it. And they come to me and they will find me in the streets and say, Allison, can we just sit in the park for a little while? Can we do a tapping session? And, or I've had kids come to me and say, mom's been really sad or she's, she's struggling. Can we get together and do a yoga session so we can finish tapping? And I was so moved and we, it was a simple session. We didn't go into anything deep. It was just acknowledging how much we do for our kids and how much they appreciate it. And then. Wow. It's just, that's just right there. Amazing. Like taking a moment and that's what happens when we tap, even if we are, you know, we do self care and we, you know, uh, do other modalities, the verbal process of being acknowledged and somebody seeing you can release so much weight off your shoulders that you didn't even know you had as a mother. <laughs> You're like, whoa, someone can see that. And then their little ones see, you know, they know when their moms are, are happy and they know when their moms are feeling loved. Allison, what a beautiful story. And so any tips that you have, I guess it's tapping on with the moms, but anything else you want to share? Well, and I got one more story that links. So my life, I'm pretty busy and I, I haven't been able to do as much with the tapping as I'd like to say. Like I haven't started any organization or anything, but I do it on the fly all the time. And I'm always doing it with people. And I have kind of an inkling, you know, I'll read a Facebook post of somebody I haven't talked to in two, three years, and there's just an undercurrent. So I pick up the phone and call them and how's it going? And I've got one teenage girl. Well, she was a young adult. She just graduated. She just moved away and she was cutting and she wasn't eating. She was, had some body dysmorphia, you know, and she couldn't eat she like she'd make the plate of food and it would make her sick to think about bringing it to her mouth and she her she cut for a very long time and she was trying to start life and so we did a tapping session I was like okay sweetie we need to do this again and we'd done it a few times in the past um but this time she was wanting it she was open to it and we tapped and we did a deep dive we did a deep round and the next two three weeks that girl moved mountains we tapped through and it was all about giving forgiveness to our asking for our body for forgiveness for all the trauma we'd put it through and all the self-respect that we hadn't been giving ourselves and we it was a deep dive and this girl was calling me for the next two weeks to have meals together and celebrate every meal. She was just like, Allison, oh my God, like I woke up hungry. I made myself bacon and eggs. I woke up hungry, wanting to eat it. And I, this, and she registered for school that she'd been prolonging doing for six to nine months before that. She was too scared to do it because she couldn't go face people and she was too fat and she registered for school. She left her boyfriend that was abusive. She like, in a matter of three weeks, this girl, she is now a nursing assistant and she is rocking it. She looks amazing. She's eating, she's doing everything. And it was out of, you know, the first session moved mountains. Then we tapped regularly after that to keep up the food and everything else. It just, and you know, when my senses tell me to tap with somebody, I've, I tap in the moment, I tap when it's needed. And I have so many people that come back to me six months later, eight months later and go, you and like that changed my life. And now they're looking for you. Now they're, they're wanting to sit down and have coffee and a session. And it's, wow. you know, the people and some people don't even acknowledge it. They don't think of it. And you go through one session 
on something so small. I did one, another session with one uh, teenager on scheduling and it turned into a self-worth and self-respect. If I don't put these boundaries in for me, then how am I going to get my studying done for my schooling? And always come from the heart. It always has to come from the heart and their comfort level and when the time is right. Wow. Yeah. I, I am moved by this. I think I needed this conversation more than anything. Cause it's, it's, you just, don't know the impact in, in teaching someone this simple technique and how it can truly change their life or save their life in dark moments. And what I'm seeing here is each and every one of you are a safe, you've become a safe person for kids, whether they've tapped with you or not, they, you've created an environment and a, a place that their emotions are welcome in, that their emotions aren't judged in. And that in tapping, we teach you how to be curious about your emotions instead of critical. And that our emotions are a roadmap to something deeper that might be going on. And that this tool is safe and empowering. It's not going to take you where you don't want to go. By tapping, it's going to soothe the nervous system. So one of the things that I know each of you could could contest to here is that it's like it's like having a massage after like you feel relaxed you're yawning you've cried you're like whoa I just feel like I just let go of a bunch of stuff and I just honor each of you for for doing this work and for saying yes to learning tapping and sharing these tips with fellow parents or people in the community that work with kids um it's truly limitless what we can do with this so uh, I'm going to share, there's a couple other tips um, that I saw come through, and I, I will also share this on YouTube after, so we'll post that, um, but there's, uh, I'm just going to read a couple of them. So you can pick fun names for the points uh, that can tell a story. They usually resonate with one point and have them remember that that point if they don't remember anything else. So this is, especially if you're working with little ones, so you can just have them tap on one specific point instead of going to all the points. Um, yes, thymus tapping can help them help calm them and bonus stimulates the nervous system. Great reminder, finger tapping. Um, I teach them finger tapping um, or tapping just like this if they are in school and they don't want anyone to notice. Adults as well, if you're ever in a public place and you don't want anyone to notice. Do you want to unmute Sh Shannon and share that? That's okay. And I meant the immune system, not the, the nervous system <laughs> and the thymus tapping. Um, but I have, because, you know, sometimes with, with my son, he's, you know, well, last year when I taught him it, he was, he was six. And so it was kind of hard for him to get that specific spot. So I would just have him pinch. Oh, so wow. if he couldn't do anything like a finger press, but just pinching. And so kids can easily just pinch. And so whenever the fire drill would come or anything that made him nervous in school, he would pinch. And um, he even, I did a kid's workshop with a nonprofit that I work with. And he sat alongside me as um, like my co-host. It was amazing. And then one of the things he said is you can pinch your fingers and nobody will even know. And so, yeah. Wow. And that's important. So for for those of you that are new to tapping, we have meridians that run from the tips of our fingers to the tops of our head to the bottoms of our feet. It's almost like a highway system in the body. And so when you tap on those finger points, it's stimulating the acupressure points in the hands and up the arms. So you'll notice like whenever I do finger tapping, so I use it for meditation a lot. It kind of gets you into this meditative slow state where you just, after you stop, you'll notice like your body is calmer. You'll notice that you breathe deeper. So these are such great tips. Thank you. Um, you can get creative and have them use art to talk and tap. My daughter would love that. That's a great tip. I had a little one that wasn't ready to talk, but she would communicate by drawing. Awesome. Um, and they can tap to the beat of their favorite song. These are all great. Um, can you give an example of the stories you tell on the points, Katrin? Um, like, is that a question for Shannon, Katrin? Is that what you're asking? I'll let you answer, Shannon. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, so, you know, Nick Ortner wrote the book, Gorilla Thumps. I don't know if that's the whole title, um, but he uses like hairy eyebrows. So when I was teaching that group from the nonprofit, we would talk about the hairy eyebrows and we would like visualize birds sitting on top of the hairy eyebrows. And then um, the side of the eye is like the eagle eye point. And so we talk about how things look different when you're way up high and how you start to get planting the seeds of how you can see things differently. 
you know, when you're tapping and like underneath the eye is the lion cry point. And a lot of kids really like this because lions aren't supposed to cry, but they're big and strong, but lions can even cry too. And so attaching some of these points in some fun ways, um, some people change the names of them and like the wolf um, point is down here, I think. And so we would all howl and make noise. And this is, um, we use the side of the, underneath the arms as a bear hug. And so giving yourself a hug and learning to love yourself and just teaching little stories with all the different points. I see almost like building characters for the points that gets them engaging with it. That's brilliant. Well, thank you all so much for sharing today. And for anyone watching this, please come to the Learn to Tap training. This is where each of them first found me and started tapping and it is free. It's happening next week. Um, at the time of this recording, it's happening next week, September 18th to 21st. Um, and I run this training multiple times a year, sometimes just once a year. N normally it's twice a year. Um, and I'm going to teach you the, the science of tapping. We're going to teach you the basics. So you're going to learn the tapping points. We're going to talk about um, tapping as a manifestation tool. So not just to heal past trauma, but also to create amazing future for yourself. And then the business of tapping and how to use tapping to help other people. So it's really, it's it's like better than a paid course. You're getting it for free. It's got all the stuff in it. Um, those replays if you can't make it live. And we really encourage you to come. If any of these ladies or anyone has referred you to it, uh, please let us know because we like to thank people in our community for sharing this work and tapping with the world. So we look forward to hearing from you. Share this with anyone you think might need it or uh, receive support from it. Tag them below, share it to your page and feel free to reach out to myself or any of these ladies. I'll make sure that you have their contact for tapping with your little ones. We'll see y'all next time. Thank you all so much. Bye everyone.